Gen Rec Secretary Colin O'Mara joins us on set as our first person this week. Now we have a lot of ground to cover. Secretary, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Um, want to talk about first though your resignation from the department to take on a position as the president and CEO of the National Wildlife Federation. Were you looking for another job? No, I actually feel like I have the best job in Delaware. Um, you know, the, the number of things that Denrec you know, is involved in, you know, for better or for worse, um, I've, I've loved every minute of it. And uh, about a month and a half ago, I got a call um, from a headhunter asking if I had any interest in being considered as a, a candidate mm -hmm. for the National Wildlife Federation. And um, as someone in the kind of the conservation movement, it's just one of those positions that's just too good to turn, to turn down. And mm -hmm. so I, I was not looking at all. I actually wanted to stay, you know, for, for a couple more years at least. Um, but the time came along. You know, when you accepted the position, though, you made a stipulation that you would not go over to the NWF until July because you wanted to see the governor's clean water tax initiatives go through. Um, where are we in that process? Are we going to see legislation? Because what we're hearing is that the bill is in draft form. Yeah, so the, I mean, I think I think over the last few years, we've made good progress on a bunch of different fronts, but one area we just haven't invested enough in it is water. And there's broad acceptance among by the legislators that we need to invest invest more. I think a lot of folks have uh, questions about whether the mechanism we proposed made sense, but we're not seeing anybody, nobody's really questioning the science, nobody's really questioning the projects. Um, and so there there is a, a, a bill that's, you know, kind of being floated about right now. We're going to be meeting with um, with leadership next week, and we're hoping to uh, make a real push to get as much done as we as we possibly can over the next two months. And it's, it's cleaning the water but it's also kind of planning with stormwater uh, drainage and runoff and those, and those issues. Yeah, and so there you have you know, upgrades to wastewater plants and, and drinking water plants, which are important, but now a third of the, of the package is actually related to stormwater. And, mm -hmm. you know, when you see pictures, you know, in, in the media or, or other places of kids getting lifted out of school buses, you know, into rafts <laughs> because mm -hmm. the because the floodwaters have come so bad because we don't have enough stormwater infrastructure outside of Claymont, for example, I mean, the time is now to act. And, and so we're trying to convince some of the legislators that the, the politics of investing is actually better um, than the politics of con folks concerned about any kind of new tax and kind of making that making that case but you know flood abatement's a huge part of the package and if there's ever a I don't think there's ever been a better example um, you know than we've had the last couple of weeks combined with the storms we saw the last couple of years mm -hmm. now did that did that has you have you found that those the, ra the rain events have helped your cause absolutely I, I think I think it, it reiterates because then I get the question saying well how would this have helped that and so I can say well you know there's massive stormwater needs along Governor Prince Boulevard and so if we, those investments had been in place the water wouldn't have come up as high because you would have had additional additional storage and additional um, kind of flood abatement and so it's it's, very, it's a very tangible way so whether mm -hmm. it's you know flooding at Bay Health in Dover or flooding in the inland bays mm -hmm. or along the Nanticoke um, every community's experience challenges and this would help alleviate those I guess the hard part about it is that $45 annual yeah. service fee so how what are you saying to law makers to um, to sell that part of it yeah so I mean for a, for a household that you know got had their basement flooded out during the last storm they're spending a lot more than $45 to re replace stuff that was that was damaged to um, to you know, dealing with other other costs related to these events mm -hmm. and so I think the more that the more that we're kind of looking at the avoided costs as opposed to just the upfront cost, um, you know, the benefits become become pretty clear. And also, it's it's, it's I mean, compared to so forty five dollars, it is a lot of money for for, for many folks. Um, but it's a third of the average you know cable bill. It's you know half of the average phone bill, a monthly phone bill. And so this is a year, and those are you know those are monthly. Um, so compared to other things, where we're, we're all of us are spending money on, um, you know, it's it's a it's a fairly small amount compared to the benefit that we get, and we need clean water um, mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in, a, in a meaningful in a meaningful way in this state. And so trying to put that in proportion, in perspective to the other investments that folks are making is hopefully making the case a little bit. Will it come up for a vote this session, definitely? We're, we're hoping so. We're hoping okay. so. We're working very hard to, to make, that, make, that, <laughs> <laughs> make that happen. Well, we're going we're gonna to go on to something else, but Delaware has often led the way in terms of green initiatives. Mm -hmm. Aside from waterways, where do you think we still need the most work? Yeah, I think, I mean, waterways obviously are, are front and center. I mean, we've done, we've done a great job on the air quality side. We've cleaned up our power plants more than any other state, and now we're now the next frontier is the out-of-state pollution, and we're doing a lot of work there. Mm -hmm. Brownfields, you know, we've done a great work. I mean, our recycling rates doubled in the last four years. Um, you know, we're fifth or sixth in the country right now in solar. And I think another area that we need to focus a lot, two other areas that I think we need a lot more focus on, one is around energy efficiency. Um, there's some legislation that we wanted to get passed. It's a House Bill 179 that would really expand a lot of the programs. And, and it would also lower energy prices for everybody to put a lot of people to work. So um, we haven't made as much progress there as we could. And then the other is related to, um, is related to Kind of the tourism economy and the recreational assets. Um, you know, we don't invest in our in our 
not just our waterways, but our, our beaches, our parks, our wildlife areas, the way that many other states do. Um, yet, it's, a, it's the third biggest part of our economy. After kind of banking and, and agriculture, the next largest segment is tourism. And mm -hmm. you know, we don't treat those assets with that kind of investment. So, I mean, unfortunately, most of the kind of the next frontier of issues are related to money um, and trying to figure out ways to kind of build up, build up that infrastructure to make sure we're seizing both the environmental and the economic benefits. The, um accomplishments that you've had you've had five years as denrec secretary and and of everything that that's been accomplished what are you personally most proud of yeah i think i'm, I'm very proud of the um the reduction the, the cleaning up the power plants um because I, I do think that that creates a tangible benefit for the health of every delawarean um, and we're talking the coal fired power yeah. plants so we went we went from having about 10 coal units when the governor started we're down to one right now everything else has been replaced by either cleaner cleaner natural gas or mm -hmm. um or uh, renewables and, and that's the reason why our emissions have gone down more than any other state in the country. Uh, I'm really proud of the recycling effort. I um, mean, after, after kind of coming into the tail end of a, of, of a fight for 20 years, um, to have a program that's actually been able to double the recycling rate, um, but also save people money. And it's actually cheaper now than it was under the old system when folks were just doing uh, trash collection. Um, I think shows that the economics work and we're seeing you know, better and better progress there. I'm also really proud of a lot of the work that we've done related to making ourselves more resilient to, um, to storms and mm -hmm. a lot of work to be done. But you know, the investments in dikes and dams and impoundments and levees and wetlands and living shorelines, um, you know, I know it drives people nuts that we're talking about it all the time, but when these storms come about, you know, folks are really grateful that we have the infrastructure. There's a lot more work to do there, um, but we're having the conversation in a serious way in the way that most states aren't. And mm -hmm. so I think we've made better investments than, than many places. Do you think people are realizing that these are investments that need to be made regardless of where you fall in the whole climate change argument? Yeah, I think I think they're seeing that that especially the investments that we've been focused on, they make us better prepared for you know, whether it's a hurricane or just a regular nor'easter storm, mm -hmm. um, and that they're things that are going to also put us in a better position long term. But I'm also finding when, when when I first got here, I felt like there was you know kind of this big debate around the science. At this point, there's really just a few fringe folks that are kind of arguing against the science. I mean, the science is so overwhelming at this point, and the impacts have been so tangible for Delaware that you know we're not. I find we're fighting over what the best course of action is as opposed to whether there should be action, which is a very different place than we are in the national debate. We are really sad to see you go, but do you know any or have any idea about who will replace you as Denmark Secretary? Yeah, I mean, I, I lead an incredible team. Um, it's extremely talented folks. My, my deputy, David Small, is, is uh, one, of the, one of the kindest, most um, generous people I've ever met. Um, extremely, extremely keen intellect and knows how to make how, knows how to make good things happen, mm -hmm. and um, I think he's the he's the he's the kind of person that um, would be effective at implementing a lot of the the initiatives that have already been started. Um, and so there's there's a few other folks that have been talked about. The governor will make his announcement, um, but I, I'm confident because of the team we have in place that the uh, the agency will be well led into the future. One quick question: uh, I know that the, your new position will take you to Virginia, rest in Virginia, but you are planning to stay in Delaware. Is that correct? Yeah, I, I've loved it here. You um, know, I, I love having my my daughter Riley, our little Delawarean, you know, Lindsay. <laughs> Lindsay and I have really enjoyed it. I mean, I like being an hour and a half from the beach and 15 minutes from the airport. And um, so we're, we're going to be here for, for a while. Okay. Well, thank you so much. You've been a familiar face here on our show for a very long time. So we wish you a whole lot of luck. Denrec Secretary Colin O'Mara, thank you again for your time.